What up, guys? Another Navier-Stokes equation problem uh, for fluid mechanics. It's an incompressible viscous fluid between two parallel infinite and horizontal plates. Uh, they move in opposite directions. So in the previous example, U1 was moving in the same direction, but now U2 is moving backwards. Uh, in the previous example, it was U2 was fixed. Okay, the, the second plate was just fixed. But in this case, now it's moving. So the velocity profile is going to change just a little bit. Uh, the pressure gradient in the x direction is zero, and the only body force is due to the fluid weight. In other words, that's saying that gy is something. gx is zero, okay? So that's the trick to this one. Um, they want you to use the Navier-Stokes equations to derive an expression for the velocity distribution between the two plates, and the flow is laminar. Easy money. Let's get started. All right, guys, here's another... Navier Stokes equation problem. Um, just starting off with the givens, right? Uh, the top plate is moving to the right with some velocity, and the bottom plate now is moving to the left. The other one, the bottom plate, was staying still. But in this case, now they're both kind of doing their thing, right, in the opposite direction. Uh, they tell you the pressure gradient in the x direction is zero. They say that the only body force is the fluid weight itself. But because our flow is in the x direction, um, remember from the Navier-Stokes equations, um, uh, because our flow is only in the x direction, we only care about the body forces in that direction. So they say the body force is due to fluid, right? So that means GY is that body force that they're talking about. GX is zero. And that's what's important to us, right? Because we're going to do the, the Navier-Stokes equation in the x direction in the flow, in the fluid flow direction, okay? Um, it's laminar flow. Um, it's steady state again. Uh, you guys are all undergrads, probably some graduates, maybe some PhDs. PhDs might not be doing unsteady, but I mean steady state. Uh, they might be doing unsteady, but if you're bachelor's or graduate, uh, undergrad or a graduate doing your master's, um, you'll most likely still be doing um, steady state only. So. In this case, um, they tell us, hey, what's the velocity profile on the Y? So this is very easy, uh, nothing crazy. It's just one page, uh, I'll go through it. We start off with the Navier-Stokes equation, okay? Now it's just this equation, this is the one you typically see in the books, but I just like to divide density to everything. So the density here goes away, right? Um, and I just have these terms uh, up here. Then look, I get a negative one over density because this was negative. Uh, the negative, the density here goes away. And that kinematic viscosity, that dynamic viscosity turns to kinematic viscosity because of the formula, right? And then all this just stays the same. For some reason, for me, it was always easier to learn it this way. In my graduate, uh, in the undergrad, I had no idea how to do these problems. And somehow I passed. That's all that matters, right? Um, so now that we have the Navier-Stokes equation uh, that we need in the Cartesian coordinates x component, right? Because that is our fluid flow, so it's best to choose a coordinate system that best represents your system. In this case, we're dealing with plates, and it's just the up and down direction, left and right. So cool. And then Z direction is just into the page. Um, But let's go ahead and start doing the second step. Well, let me just kind of explain here. It's a incompressible Newtonian fluid. So that means the viscosity remains constant no matter the shear stress rate. And that's why we were able to divide by density all over, okay? And, uh, it, I mean, it, like I said, you guys are dealing with most likely the undergrad course. A lot of you watching this video. So, it really doesn't get crazy. If you guys think this is crazy, you guys haven't seen crazy, trust me. So, don't, don't worry me. We'll, we'll, we'll explain. It looks like a scary equation, but we'll, we'll simplify it, okay? So, now... We're going to do the fun part. I like I like this part the best because this really is going to determine if you do the problem uh, right or wrong. OK, so you got to start knowing what the problem knowns are and the assumptions. And that's going to help you reduce this crazy, nasty equation into like three terms, maybe two, maybe four. It all depends on the problem itself. So so you'll see what I mean. Look, this is the next step. Let me explain. OK, just stay with me. The flow is only in the X direction. OK. So that means this is the flow in the X, flow in the Y, flow in the Z. Not, not these partials, just the U, V, W, okay? X, Y, Z. Flow is only in the X, so that means V and W are zero, okay? 
um, all the flow is traveling to the right, okay? So, and to the left kind of thing, right? Because the plate's moving this way, but this one's moving this way, so the fluid's kind of like, hey, where do I go kind of thing. And I could kind of imagine it's going to do this, right? I'm using intuition. I imagine because this plate up top is going this way, and this one's going this way, where well, you're going to have high magnitudes of velocity going to the right in this case, right? Going that way. Um, and then as you go towards the center, you're going to reach zero, like an inflection point. And then you're going to start switching signs because this one's going this way now. So you're going you're gonna to have high magnitudes of velocity this way. So I'm just using intuition to kind of see how this flow is going to look. Okay. And technically this is a function, right? Representing this flow. And that's what we're looking for. That's the whole point of the problem. Okay. We want to find the velocity profile. So going back to the cancellation of terms, V and W are zero. So that means this whole term goes away and this whole term goes away, okay? So just like that, we knocked out two. Now we gotta focus on the other ones. Steady state. You guys are always gonna be digging with steady state. That term goes away. Uh, infinite plates. So this is saying going into the page, this same profile is gonna be the case anywhere you go. It's gonna be the case here, 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 here. Any, as far as you're going in, as long as you're going in, that profile is gonna stay the same. That's what the infinite plates assumption is. And I don't know if it's considered an assumption, right? It kind of is just what you're dealing with. But that's what it's saying. The velocity in the x direction, right? This velocity in the x direction is not going to change with respect to z. So it doesn't matter how deep you go into the paper. That same profile is going to be the same thing, okay? So just take the second derivative of 0. That's also 0. So just like that, we canceled two more terms in the equation. That one. But this one was already canceled, so it doesn't count. But that one, we canceled that one, right? That's what that one is. Now, from the problem, they told us there's no pressure gradient in the x direction, delta p over delta x. So that means this goes away. And then remember, g of x is 0. The only body force is the weight of the fluid itself. That's gy. We care about gx for this equation. So gx is 0. So that means this term goes away. So this term went away. So we're down to these two terms on this side. This term going away, this term went away. So only those two. Then on this side, this term went away, this one went away, but they both went away, I guess. V went away, so this term goes away. Uh, this one's still active, because we have U, and we haven't done anything with this, but this one went away. So we're only stuck with this one and these two. So now we're gonna use the conservation of mass, okay? We're saying mass is conserved, fluid mechanics. You guys haven't, I'm pretty sure if you guys have seen this already, but mass is conserved. And this is the Cartesian mass conservation uh, equation, okay? Partial U, partial X, plus partial V, partial Y, plus partial W, partial Z. When you add them all together, is equal to zero. The change in the X direction flow with respect to X, plus the change in the Y direction flow with respect to Y, plus the change in the z direction with respect to z is zero. So remember, v and w were zero. So take the partial with respect to y of this. What do you get? You just get zero, right? And take the partial with respect to y of this. Well, take the partial of zero, you're going to get zero. So these two are zero. That means these two are zero. Now, when these two are zero, it means this one's zero because it's all equal to zero. So now that this is zero, we get this right. Take the partial again with respect to x. Well, guess what? Take the derivative of zero, it's just going to get zero. So now this went away, and boom, that went away. So now we all this is gone to the left side of the equation. Gone, 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 gone. So now we're just stuck with this one. Kinematic viscosity times this is equal to zero. And that's what we have here. Okay, so check it out. This is the term. Divide both sides by kinematic viscosity. This goes away. And boom, just like that, we went from this massive, crazy equation down to this. <laughs> it's kind of cool, right? So that's why I like these problems. Like, you start off so complicated. And as long as you know kind of like how to assess the situation, and I hope you understood what I was trying to say these past couple minutes. But that's really all it is, right? It's just starting off with the complicated equation that this guy decided to come up with so many years ago and just deduce it. In this case, this differential equation describes our system, okay? Now, this is a differential equation, so you need to solve it. And this one's pretty easy. You just integrate twice. Integrate this, you get a constant, right? Zero goes to a constant. Well, integrate that constant, you just get C1y plus C2. Add the y and then another constant. So this is a general solution. What this means is 
this general solution can solve an entire gang of problems, okay? It's still not the answer for our problem, but it can solve it. All we need to do is apply our boundary conditions that are specific to this problem. And now we should be able to get the particular solution, okay? So that's the, or the exact solution. That's the general solution. Now let's start doing the boundary conditions, okay? So when you do the, ignore this, step seven. That's uh, not needed right now. But let's do the boundary conditions. Now we're gonna use this, this is just the, the diagram that we're dealing with up here, okay? The plate at the top, plate at the bottom is the plate at the top, plate at the bottom. And y equals zero, y equals b. So that's what we see here, okay? y equals zero, y equals b. So there's a boundary condition here and there's a boundary condition here. So we're gonna up, get those boundary conditions and we're gonna use them to find our constant C1 and C2. So we have two unknowns, we need two boundary conditions. And yeah, in this case, that's here where, and this is where they are. Sometimes in future problems, you know, you might have a boundary condition right at the center. Uh, sometimes a boundary condition could be a uh, shear stress, right? From these equations. Um, you can use these to do boundary conditions and we will. I'll do some examples soon, uh, just FYI. But um, for now, let's just stick to our problem. Um, we're, we're here, right? So at y equals b, I said, hey, at, at this location up top, right? The, the height b for y, my boundary condition is that the velocity is equal to the velocity of the plate of u1. And it's a positive u1, okay? So I put u is equal to u1. Cool. So now when I do that, look. Uh, actually, you know, just hold on to that thought. I don't want to do it just yet because you had to do this one first. And you wouldn't know on the exam, right? Um, in this case, I kind of just laid them out, but you have to do one boundary condition first and then the other. But look, at y equals zero, you'll see what I mean right now. At y equals zero, we know the velocity of the plate. Oh, the velocity is just the velocity of the plate, which is negative u2, right? This one's positive u1 because it's going to the right. This one's negative u2 because it's going to the left. So when I plug in, Using this general solution, let me use my pencil, um, for, for u is equal to negative u2. So this is u right here. So for every y that I see, I'm going to plug in y equals 0. So that becomes a 0, and that's it. So c2 is equal to 0. Oh, I'm sorry, not, not, not a 0. It's equal to negative u2, right? Because this was negative u2. So c2 is equal to negative u2, right? I just applied the boundary conditions. That u got placed here. And then the y became a zero. So C2 is equal to negative U2. That's the boundary condition. So now that I have C2, now I could go back to this boundary condition. Look, now for U is equal to U1. So this is U1 now, okay? For every y that I see, I'm going to plug in a b. So U1 is equal to C1b plus C2. C1b plus C2, but C2 was already negative U2. So I just plug that in. So now I have u1 and u2, okay? Or my bad, now I, oh, my bad, hold on. Now I have this formula right here. Now I got to solve for c1, okay? I got to solve for c2 and c1. That way I could plug them in here once I find them and that's gonna give me my velocity profile. So that's what I did here. I solved for c1 using this equation C1 is equal to U1 plus U2 over B, right? I just move this to that side, divided by B. Now that I have C1 and C2, I found my particular solution, the velocity profile. So the velocity in the X direction as a function of Y, so uh, as you go up and down your two plates, right? Up and down, velocity varies. It could be very high here, low here, high here, whatever, right? And that's what this profile is telling you. So now that I just got this U, Y, is equal to C1, which is this, times Y minus, plus C2, but it's negative U2, so it's minus U2. And that's the answer, just like that. Easy, you see, these questions, um, they really are straightforward. It's just kind of scary seeing this equation, but nothing we can't handle. I'll do a couple more of these, and if you like the video right, just let me know. Um, hopefully you guys understood it better, but these problems shouldn't be stumbling you on exams. They, they really shouldn't. They're, they're really simple. I don't know why you'll see it on Instagram that they're like, oh, my God, so scary. They're easy, easy money.